welcome to the instruction video for Empiric Pediatric. Um, this is the open beta edition. On the left here we have the antibiotic deck and on the right we have the infection deck. The antibiotic deck has a number of antibiotics as well as some action cards. Antibiotics from gameplay standpoint have a name. So some will just be one penicillin, can be played as oral or IV, IM penicillin. Or um, some will have two, like this card can be played as either macrolide, erythromycin, or azithromycin. And the top corner is the delivery method, so oral or IV, IM. Some antibiotics, of course, ceftriaxone is only available as an IV or IM medication. The rest of this is educational content, mechanism, uh, class of medication, mechanism of action, typical spectrum of action, and some have special little um, icons representing important pathogens they cover. So, Vank covers MRSA, Azithro covers atypicals, and there's a list in the written instruction. Infection cards have numbers of points that they score. Treating this otitis media will score you one big point, and this requires a single oral medication to treat. On the back of the cards will be choices for treatment. This can be treated with amoxicillin or amoxicillin acid. Educational content, QR code that link links to more information online, and a list of common pathogens um, that cause the infectious vignette. So uh, pneumococcus, haemophilus, and meraxella cause ear infections, typically along with a viral infection. So to set up the game, we're gonna shuffle our antibiotic deck. And we're going to deal five cards to each player. For our infection deck, we're going to use a different number of cards depending on how many players are playing. For two players, we're going to play with 20 cards. For three players, 28 cards. And for four players, 36 cards. So um, there's 40 cards in the deck, so we're going to discard 20. We will deal out one, two, three, Four. And now we have the top of the infection deck as well as four other cards in play and available to be treated for our first player. During a player's turn, they have two options. They can either to attempt to treat one infection or they can choose to draw two cards and not treat an infection that turn. Let's see what we got. So I see that we have Bartonella adenitis as something that we can treat. And this player has azithromycin, so why don't they play Azithromycin on Bartonella adenitis. They will flip over the infection they've attempted to treat. So there actually were two options. They could have used Azithromycin, or if they'd had the observation card, that would have even been a better play. They will then score two points. They'll take that infection card into their own pile. They will discard the card that they used and will bring forward one new card into play. And at the end of the turn, when, whether you use one or two cards to treat an infection, you always draw one more card into your hand. Immunoglobulin, that looks useful. Here's our other player. Let's say, whether they can or can't, let's pretend that they think they cannot treat any infection this turn, and they will do the other option. So instead of treating an infection, they will choose to draw two cards. One, two. And when you draw um, two cards, we will discard one infection card to keep things moving. Slide everything to the right. We're always discarding from that far right position to bring fresh things out, bring everything forward. And at the end of your turn, we need to count our cards because if we have more than eight, we discard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, they don't need to discard. And we'll go back to our first player. Now, first player has got a couple um, special cards here. One is Raid the Med Room. At the beginning of their turn, they can draw some extra antibiotic cards if they choose. The other one is Filter the Urine, which allows them to take antibiotic cards from the discard pile into their hand. They might as well use Raid the Med Room at this point. They'll play that and draw one, two, three cards. And they can um, if they'd like, they can play more than one of these action cards at the beginning of their turn. But let's just say they're going to go on and uh, treat an infection. What do they got here? They can do am immunoglobulin. This is a special card that can be used as IVIG and aspirin. It can be used as bot human botulism immunoglobulin or varicella immunoglobulin. But they're going to use it as just regular IVIG and aspirin for Kawasaki disease. Flip that over. That is the correct answer. Of course, here's some more learning points and a QR code 
if you want to go online for more information. Back to player two. Player two has got a couple of good options here. Let's say they're gonna, they have, um, let's say they want to treat septic arthritis. Septic arthritis is requiring one injected medication. They're gonna use clindamycin, which can be played as an injected medication. Flip it over. Clindamycin or vancomycin were both options. I wanna take a look at some of the other cards here, just for, um, just to give you a little more sense of how um, some of the options for treatment are. As you remember, septic arthritis said clinda or vanc. If there's no symbol between them, it's an implied or. Some re require two medications, so. PID requires two injected or an injected and oral, so you can use cefotetin and doxy, cefoxetin and doxy, or clinda and gent as options to treat that one. Um, dental abscess. This is your typical ore, but there's a lot of options. Clinda, Amox, Amoxclav, and Penicillin. Um, all of those just being given as oral medications. So let's just keep going forward. So as we keep playing, players will just take turns playing cards and scoring points. Now we get to another interesting um, action card. This is the Call Pharmacy card. You can name any antibiotic or immunoglobulin and use it as any of those. Let's take a crack at that pelvic inflammatory disease, right? So let's say we have Gent and play that card as clindamycin. Flip it over. Clinda and Gent is an option. Score seven big points there. Discard them and slide forward. Now they played two antibiotic cards that turn but they only draw one. No matter how many antibiotic cards they play, they draw one to restock their hand. A little irony there, drawing Clinda after using your wild as a Clinda. See if we treat that top of the deck, nothing moves forward. Now let's say someone's gonna get something wrong here. So let's say they play Rifampin on C. diff. What happens then? So if, an, if you incorrectly treat an infection, we used Rifampin, Rifampin is not an option. That card is discarded. You draw one card as always. This card remains in play, so the cards do not slide forward. That just remains there, and it's the second player's turn. Don't see any good options for them, so they're gonna do the draw two cards. Remember the far right position is discarded. Cards slide forward. Let's count these cards, one. So they have nine cards, they have to discard. What are they going to get rid of? Well, they've got two copies of a Mox Clav, so that might be a smart one to discard. Back to player one. So at this point in the game, maybe that filter the urine card is a little more appealing. This can be used at the beginning of the turn, and they can choose to pick two cards from the discard pile to put into their hand. Grab some azithromycin for that chlamydia trachomatis pneumonia, or the pertussis. And looks like we've got Otis Media that's still febrile. Grab the Amox Clav. They still get to play a card this turn. So let's use one year old with fever and otalgia, still febrile after Amox. Oral or an IV choices, but they're gonna use Amox Clav. It could be Amox Clav or Ceftraxone plus minus Clinda. They'll score those points. Discard that. It was the top of the deck, so it's replaced by the card below. We have vaccinated. Inpatient pneumonia. Ampicillin is a choice for that one. Here's another special card. Post call rounds. They can play at the beginning of their turn. They draw, draw one card immediately. In this turn, they can treat two infections. So they'll get azithromycin. Hey, that's convenient. Treat chlamydia trachomatis pneumonia. Goes in their pile. Anything else? No, oh, use another azithromycin up for pertussis. Slide forward. Remember, we're always sliding to the right, replacing those cards below. They draw one at the end of their turn, as always, and it's the next player's turn. Gonococcal arthritis takes an oral and an IV medication, so we're gonna use ceftraxone and azithromycin to treat that. Scores them five points. That's the correct answer. Those are discarded. Slide forward. Now remember, no matter how many cards we play, we always just draw one places.
And now when the top of the deck is gone, when the deck space is empty, the game ends and it's time to tally up the points. So, five, 10, 22, five, 10, 16 points. So player one is winning with 22 points. So one last card we didn't address that's important is the observation card. This card can be used on certain infections where antimicrobials are not necessary, where observation is an option. And this card is unique amongst the antibiotic deck in that it scores points on its own. So let's say we observe instead of treating Bartonella adenitis. That is an option. So the player will score two points for treating the infection and also score two points for the observation card. Unlike other antibiotics that would go in the discard pile, this card goes into the player's point pile.